Yeah, Doc, this is, uh, I think it's a necessary conversation. I think we should be doing more of these. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're gonna go back to um, social distancing. Okay. Well, um, I want to thank you, first of all. Um, I mean, this is quite a conversation and I have, uh, you know, this, this is definitely a conversation that needs to be had. All right, so we're about 42 seconds in, 43 seconds in. Um, so those of you, we're gonna be waiting just a little bit for people to log on. I think you have uh, quite a few um, people that have viewed your Facebook page. Is that correct? All right. Well, if you're joining me now, I have approximately two people in this particular live video. I am back. Yeah, I know y'all miss me. Y'all, no, I know they miss me. They miss me? No, they didn't miss me. Well, again, I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in. Those that have lined in, jumped in and into this conversation. I think this conversation is a very necessary conversation. I am joined with Dr. Once again, Danita Morales Ramos. Ramos. Um, Doc, we've been in this COVID-19 for quite a few months. Um, it's been a challenge. I think um, a lot of people have been very, very concerned uh, by the legislation. Uh, we're talking specifically or specifically to the state of Virginia or about the state of Virginia. So I brought you on because I saw your Facebook Live this afternoon or this morning. And I want to have a conversation about COVID-19 and the most recent or several executive orders that may have concerned you. So, Doc, I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of your concerns. Um, we do know here in the state of Virginia, the numbers have ris risen just a bit. Um, Hampton Roads numbers have increased. Uh, there's been a lot of legislation, there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of Facebook conversation, and a lot of things that we've been talking about concerning these things as it relates to wearing your mask, right? So normally you'll see folks talking with a mask on or you'll see them talking without a mask, you know? But I want you to talk to me about your concerns about this executive order, first and foremost, um, but can you just give me up some background on this particular incident that happened to you recently? Sure, sure. Thanks, Tutan. Um, you, you're right. They, these are scary times for us. Um, I will not deny that at all. Um, it's scary times for me as a professional, but more so as a citizen here in Virginia um, and in our country, um, where I also recognize that may be the case for other people as well. Um, the most recent incident, although there have been several since this has happened, um, yeah, several, um, was I went to a restaurant yesterday and entered into the restaurant. As a matter of fact, I've been to this restaurant several times um, since uh, the different restrictions and uh, emergency uh, orders um, and had not had an experience like this. Um, and so it was very traumatic, to say the least. Um, I sat down as I know I can, um, as long as you said they have the social distancing with the table right, right, right. and all that stuff. And so you're just supposed to go and sit down. Um, I was greeted. Um, now, I don't know if I should call it greeted. Um, I had a waitress to come to me and says, um, hi, you need to have on a mask. Uh, what I explained to the lady is I said in a very calm um, and what I consider a respectful voice. I said, no, um, I have a medical condition. Now, stop, right there. stop right there. You you went into a restaurant already. It's clear that we are supposed to have our mask on, right? Yeah. To protect us from uh, coming in contact or being infected, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea that you walked in this restaurant on Mercury Boulevard without a mask and you said to them that, no, I have a medical condition. This is why I chose not to wear a mask. Now pick up what was that experience like? What I mean, because I'm thinking like, well, wait a minute, then you need to get out of my restaurant. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Why are you here? I don't want to get infected by you, right? Right. Um, and that that wasn't the response. The 
the response was not even about the medical condition. It was just that you don't have on a mask. She, she didn't right. even have a concern about that. And okay. so, yeah, like you said, walking in, um, here's executive order 63. Um, this is, I, I, I gave you a link. So anyone watching this can go to this. This is our governor's signature. Uh, let me move it over there, right? Um, right there. And so uh, this is the executive order that talks about the face covering, Teton. And um, thankfully, our governor, who is a physician, um, for what I've been made aware of, must understand that some people may have problems if they have something over their face, um, if okay. they have trouble breathing. And so here, um, although there is a requirement to wear a mask, there is exceptions. And uh, uh, if, do, do you mind if I read this exception, number six? Uh, you can read that exception. I think, it's, I think it's worthy of conversation. If you're joining us now, we're talking about uh, whether or not we should be wearing a mask or should we not wear a mask for the general public. Uh, this is Dr. Danita Morales, and uh, she had an experience and she wanted to look, we're just kind of looking at the executive order and trying to understand what policies are written correctly, are business owners confused? And so, the doc, if you can go ahead and just read that section so people can understand exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And definitely the order does say you wear a face mask. Uh, but it says exceptions and there are six. The last one says persons with health conditions that prohibit wearing a face covering. Listen to this language very clearly. Nothing, nothing in this order shall require the use of a face covering by any person for whom doing so would be contrary to his or her health or safety because of a medical condition. And then right under it, it says any person who declines to wear a face covering because of a medical condition shall not be required to produce or carry medical documentation verifying the stated condition, nor shall the person be required to identify the precise underlying medical condition. Okay, I'm confused, Doc. I'm confused. So yes. what are you saying? Are you, are, are you saying that people are watching the debrief on Facebook and not going to the website and looking at the executive order and comprehending and understanding what policy, what the policy is really saying? Or are you saying something's being communicated differently and our citizens are confused? Uh, both, yes. So that was the, the rhetoric that I got after uh, about 30 plus minutes of me just trying to get a meal um, and having four or five different people approach me, uh, making me feel humiliated. And what the man, oh, I thought she was the manager, but I found out today when I went back to share these orders with her, she was the owner um, of the establishment at Tommy's Restaurant here in Hampton on Mercury Boulevard. Okay, um, we'll just say the name. Okay, we're saying names, go ahead, all right. Yes, I mean, it's on my page. I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah. So when I went back, uh, I, after being traumatized yesterday, I went back as a citizen because I said to myself, what if I, I'm a business owner? What if it's something that I'm missing? You know, okay. I, and I would want a fellow citizen or business owner to help me. She kept saying that the governor said, and she said, I can show you. And I, I said, no, I, I, I know the laws. But at the time, because I was just going to get something to eat, with my family. I didn't have this printed off, but obviously I need to walk around with it. And when I shared this this morning with her, as well as either the other owner or manager, all I kept hearing was that they called the state department and the governor said, and I said, ma'am, this it doesn't matter what he says. It matters <laughs> what he wrote and what he signed in his hand. So in answer to your question, yes, uh, one, the first problem is ignorance of the law. This is law here, um, in addition to the federal law. And those number who don't understand what you're holding up, you're holding up the executive order number 67, the most recent executive order? Uh, the most recent is executive 67, but this okay. is the one specifically 63 about the face covering, okay. which has not been you know, nullified in any type of way. Okay. The second problem is the uh, mass media and the political propaganda that is promoting one thing, okay, and not promoting this. And so we go back to that ignorance of law that I hear on the news, the governor says, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. Um, and now you can kick people out. 
That's not what this law says. Wow. So let me get this correct. You're not here to encourage people not to wear their mask. You're not here to solicit some level of rebellion. Uh, I want to make sure that's made clear. But you want to make what you're saying to me right now is that businesses and small businesses within our city and throughout the Hampton Roads area, they're not reading the executive order and not understanding the policy. So in other words, if I have a predisposed medical condition that prevents me from wearing a mask, whether if I have asthma or whatever, um, I'm still able to come into that store. So that means you can't put me out the stores is what you're saying. Um, based on the law, uh, the state law and the federal law, you okay. no, you can't. You you have a, a public establishment that offers goods and services. Um, you cannot, you cannot deny me of that unless you want legal repercussions. Okay. Now let's let's take off the mask part for a minute. If you deny me because of my skin color, if you deny me because um, I'm in a wheelchair, okay. those have some federal repercussions. But I don't even want to go that deep today because I have enough from the state. Your governor, citizens of Virginia, says if I have a medical condition, you don't get to humiliate me in a uh, restaurant while I'm trying to get some eggs and bacon. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so tell me so, Doc, let me let me let me let me let me ask this. How is it that so for, in other words, if I don't feel like wearing a mask today and I want to go to Wawa and uh, get me some coffee and a nice little, you know, sandwich and whatnot. And I see the sign on the door. No, no, no. no. It, you, the, the, so language is important. That's why okay. we have this. You say I don't feel like wearing it. this. this well, right, well, here's this. I, I, I could sit right now and say to a manager at a store. Right. I don't need to wear a mask because I have a predisposed medical condition. Okay. Um, I have a disability. Okay. Now, that manager, as you said, in the executive order, really, I, I don't have to prove anything to the manager. That right. manager has to allow me to come in. Is that correct? Uh, based on that, yes. But I think you're trying to ask or, or say or suggest, you know, can people just start popping up all over the place? Well, that's what's going to happen. But here's this is the reason why I asked that question, because it's easy for me to Usually we don't feel like wearing a mask. We don't want to wear a mask, but there's there's a concern and a great regard to protect ourselves. However, if I go into Wawa right. and I look onto the door and it says social distancing, all right. patrons must wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And I come into the restaurant or to the shopette and I don't have a mask and I'm approached by a manager and they ask me, and I can say to them, I have a predisposed medical condition. So does that mean that anybody and everybody can just come in and not show proof and still expose themselves or expose others to potential virus? Is that problematic? Uh, that definitely could be problematic. And then that, that's a whole other issue because I'm definitely not promoting that people walk around and say that they have a medical condition, especially me being in the healthcare um, field, being a healthcare provider. I am most certainly not suggesting that you walk around and lie and say that you have a medical condition. But I am certainly saying that you have a right, okay, if to protect your health. Okay. Okay. Now, if protecting your health for you means wearing a mask, falling in these guidelines, then so be that. Okay. Protecting my health means I don't wear a mask and I have the legal right to do that. Now, Doc, I, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But what happens, unfortunately, if you come in contact with the virus? because you had a predisposed medical condition, you have not been wearing a mask, and now you come in contact with the virus. Well, first of all, I, I haven't seen the research that says that the masks work, first of all. Um, that's another interview. Um, second of all, I have just as much, um, uh, uh, if not more, um, potential to risk to other things, such as secondhand smoke, okay, okay? It cause cancer. But I still have a right as a human being to go out and live my life. Now, if that means I want to stay at home, knowing that I have a pre uh, uh, a medical condition, then I can choose to do that. Okay. Um, but I, I don't. I choose to go out. I choose to be free. I ch choose to be in my community. Now, I don't have COVID, 
Um, <laughs> but I have a medical condition and that doesn't mean, um, are, are, are we saying now that if you have a medical condition, you just should stay in the house to forever? Is that what, pe is that what people are, are wanting? Well, I, I guess I want in having this conversation, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about to mask or not to mask. Dr. Uh, Morales is with me here. She had an experience with the restaurant where she had understood fully what the legislation said and what it was written in policy that somewhat conflicted what was said in the, I believe, the live Facebook feed or the update concerning the virus. As we already know, the numbers are up in our communities and throughout our cities. But this conversation and what I'm trying to get people to understand, the most important thing is one, as you stated earlier, Doc, is to read the policies, even for business owners to read the policies. And number two, um, I want to make sure that we're not communicating to go in and, and, and just be anarchy and just walk around without a mask. So I want to make sure those things are clear. But if you have a medical condition, um, you cannot and should not, and according to the executive order that is in writing, um, executive order exactly number 63 and of course number 67, then you cannot deny me service in your restaurant or in your convenience store. Let me let me also share this with you, okay? So let's even push aside the medical part. This uh, exception says while eating or drinking. Okay. I was sitting down. Um, after I shared with the lady that I have the medical condition, she says, oh, okay, my boss was just getting on me. I said, okay, you know, I'm thinking it's done. She comes back and says, what do you guys want to drink? She's giving me coffee, drinking my coffee, and I'm observing the rest of the restaurant. No one else has on the mask, um, you know, over their face. Uh, it was probably about 10 parties or so there. Um, there were three parties that uh, had a mask that they wore like under their face, but the other seven, didn't have a mask anywhere in sight. So it says while you're eating or drinking, I was sitting at the table. All right. Um, and then the other part of that is when we're talking about um, enforcing these things, this is the other issue. And this is why I think business owners are stuck because the police would not police this here in the state of Virginia. So the governor has the health department do it. And so they're scared that their businesses are going to be shut down. Ah, or lose their business license, of course. Exactly. Okay. So what I, and I'm not an attorney, they need to talk to their attorney. Um, maybe it will look something like saying, hey, um, uh, like another restaurant that I went in, they have a sign up there that's a lot more incongruent, that's congruent with this than I see in other places. It says face mask required. Um, there's a, res a restaurant, full of restaurant, which I really appreciate, um, that has a sign that says face masks are required, blah, 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 blah. And then it goes down here. It says, but if you do not have on a face mask, we will assume you have a medical condition and we will not ask you any other questions. Very clear. And can you state or name that restaurant so people can know exactly what you're talking about? Full of restaurants. OK, never ate that before. Is the food good? The food is good. They have social distance in there. People wear masks. There are a few people that I haven't seen wear masks, but this is more in line with there. I'm looking here at CDC. Um, and while, while you looked it up, I have a question from Mr. Michael Harris. Thank you, Mr. Harris, for joining us. He says, my understanding is that the mask is to protect others, not yourself. Devil's advocate question. Should, so shouldn't you wear the mask if the restaurant requires it? The governor should either he should rewrite the language and say, get a doctor's note. What do you think about that? OK, so the first uh, oh, I lost it. The first one says to protect others. Yeah, um, that is in here in the CDC to protect others and someone else is supposed to breathe. Well, um, so if I can't breathe, you, you want me to die in order to protect others. Are you saying and I'm, I'm, I don't think Mr. Harris is saying that. I think it's a valid question. So. You're saying that we're just going to wear the mask, we can't breathe, and you know we're we're done with that. What what was the second part of his question? I mean, it's it's kind of rhetorical. Well, I guess what what he's saying, and, and he made a statement. Mike Harris, thank you again, sir. He made a statement. Says, hey, but we we may, we may need to be more specific or specific in the order. In other words, rewriting it and mm -hmm. making it clear because based on what you've shared with me and based on your experience, there is mm -hmm. some slight confusion and some misinterpretation of what the le legislation says. And you may mention earlier, someone mentioned the Facebook 
briefing. Right. But what was said in a Facebook briefing conflicted what was written. Right. Here's the problem with uh, asking for a doctor's note. OK, first of all, you, your, your governor would need to supersede some federal laws. And then you need to ask yourself a big, bigger question. Every time you go into a restaurant, do you want to be have to uh, provide your personal medical information? Mm -hmm. Do you? Okay. I personally don't have a problem with that. I don't. Um, but it can get awkward if you're there and you can't breathe. And then they know, oh, I can't breathe because I have uh, COPD or I have a uh, right. you know, right. compromised state. So now you're giving all of this to someone, you're going to spend a $20 meal. Is that is that really what we want socially? Or do we want to look at ourselves as competent adults that if you're sick, before they even said this, stay home? OK, right. um, I understand that you might have it and you might not know that you have it or what have you. Um, but you, we're opening back up. So everyone is taking a risk, especially what about the you're talking about people that are not wearing masks. What about the people that aren't wearing them properly? What about the people that have them sitting under their face? What about the people that are wearing dirty masks over and over again? I mean, we can open this conversation up as big as you want. My issue. OK, and I'll let other people fight their own is that I refuse to be discriminated against because I have a medical condition. I refuse to be discriminated against because of the color of my skin or my gender, any of those things. And those are protected by law. Well, Doc, I, I appreciate uh, you being able to share this information. I think that is important, as you mentioned previously, to read the policies, read the legislation, stay engaged. And I think a lot of times we don't read um, and it's easy for us to feel if that makes any sense. Experience something rather in terms of fear. Now there's a legitimate concern. I think we should be concerned about this virus. Matter of fact, um, I'm, I'm conscious now to keep doing this because I'm used to having my mask on when I'm supposed to, right? But I, I just wanna make sure that this conversation um, provides evidence-based facts, right? Mm -hmm. Gives opportunity for people to understand the importance of the virus, meaning that we're not talking about the virus doesn't exist. We're not here with a cone with an aluminum hat on our head saying that someone is cooking something from another planet. We're just trying to get information out, have a clear conversation and get people to understand that it is important to do what? Read, comprehend and understand what the policy says. Doc, I'm going to give you approximately five more minutes. You give me five minutes. Give me give, give me give me. Give me that 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 call to action. What you want listeners to be encouraged to do. Most importantly, I want to continue to follow up with your experience as well, because I think that this is necessary to talk about some of these concerns. Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, I mean, what we're doing here demonstrates what that we're, we're compliant. We're, we're all virtual. Right. You don't have your mask on because we're not in the same space. So we understand. Right the importance of this social distancing based on the information that we have right now. I respect that. I respect the fact that the restaurants have things space. I respect the fact that even the, the owner asking me to have a mask on, okay? Um, as business owners, I think, I don't think, I know, we need to educate ourselves on these frequently changing laws. Right. Um, and not just take at face value what is said on a soundbite on TV. OK, and we need to look at things as because I'm a business owner, as business owners, that we're also citizens here. OK, okay. and the, the patrons support your business. Right. So we need to get educated in that regard as citizens, just as patrons. Now, you shouldn't haphazardly just be walking around without a mask if you know, if you don't fall within these guidelines. And there is a law that says you need to have them on. I'm not advocating for you to break the law. That is irresponsible. Um, but if you have a health condition that prevents you from wearing a mask as a health provider, I'm not a medical doctor, but as a health provider, um, I would tell you to follow up with your medical doctor to make sure that if that mask is in your best interest or not. And based on my medical doctor, it is not in my best interest to trap the air in my from my nose and my mouth. So what if you had one of those face shields, Doc, that, you know, the ones that go across your head and then shield your face? No, because let me let me share something with you. And this is an executive, it says executive order 63, order of public health emergency. Again, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't tell you what works, 
But let's see what these questions says. It's, it actually says in here, can I wear the that plastic thing? And it said no, because it is a respiratory infection and it, that doesn't protect anything at all. Um, it's, it's in these questionnaires. So, um, uh, same here. Give me a second. Oh. Might be in the CDC. And again, this is executive order number 63. 63. Uh huh. This is very important information. Hampton yeah. Roads, Hampton, Virginia, and people outside of Hampton. I think it's uh, we we are in a place in time and culture and history and the media uh, in this place we call social distancing where there's a lot of information. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of misdirected information. And there's a lot of non-linear and linear processing. And I will definitely have more conversation about that as we continue to have more conversations as such. But Dr. Miss Don't let me let Go ahead and read that. Go ahead and read that for me real quickly here. It says, can I wear a face shield instead of a cloth covering? Employees working in customer facing areas of establishment may not substitute a face shield for a face covering. Okay. Face shields are not designed to provide respiratory uh, protection in the place of a face covering. Wow. And I see plenty of business that the people have those on and that's not okay. what's recommended. You know, um, Doc, you, 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 uh, at first when you said you wanted to have this conversation, I was a little concerned. <laughs> now we have a few questions and comments I want to get to before we wrap this up, because I think that this is a a kickstart to some continued conversations that I'm itching to talk about. But here we have Miss Kelly. I cannot pronounce your last name, but I do know who you are and I don't wanna mess it up. But Kelly says, there's always been people who feel ways to get around the regulations set forth. For some reason, people feel entitled, such as the lady in the big Starbucks incident where she had a note from her gyne gynecologist or gynecologist regarding a urinary uh, fibroid from 2015. So now mass is required. That makes no sense. I read something yesterday that citizens carrying both rights and responsibilities. Good advice to heed. Thank you very much, Miss Kelly. Um, Doc, I don't know what to say. I mean, we put the website out there. We, we want to keep people uh, conscious and aware of the concerns, but most importantly, understanding your rights. And I think you've done an excellent job being able to facilitate that conversation. But I, I thank you again. If there's nothing else you want to add to this, do you have a website? If I, I'm sure there's people out here that are going to need some counseling. I think you, you do quite well communicating on your Facebook page. I have never seen a doctor that was so in person, so personal and uh, expressive and fun like yourself. So, is there information you want to put out for those individuals that may be interested in talking to you about some of their issues and concerns? Absolutely. Um, and I offer those ser services virtually to respect those social distancing guidelines. Right. Um, you yeah. can find my website at www.assertyourself.com. You can follow me on Facebook at Danita Morales Ramos one or on Instagram at Danita Morales Ramos. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Danita Morales R1. Um, and yes, you, I understand as a psychologist, the distress. Um, I understand uh, as a citizen, the distress with COVID and all these changes. I, I, I get both ends of the spectrum. I'm not the only one experiencing this. My clients are experiencing it. I get it, but we can't just haphazardly go at things and start treating each other like crap. It's not okay. No doubt. Uh, Miss Erica says, will we keep this up? Oh, Erica, we're going to run this back one more time for you. Give a chance to look at it. Doc, thank you. Um, I'm back on deck. So I want to be able to bring you in later on on some future conversations. We're going to be talking about racism, uh, culture, ethnicity. I want to talk a little bit about Black Lives Matter, some of the things that we are experiencing locally and nationally. I think it's really time for a real dialogue. So I'm looking forward to you all tuning in. We'll keep you all posted when we'll continue these conversations. My name is T. Tom. I'm still in ingenious and I got Dr. Morales here who is ingenious. Uh, again, thank you, Doc. Thank you all for tuning in. This will be on replay and I hope that you all have a marvelous social distancing, mask wearing or to not mask wear day. I'm T. Tom and I'm out. Y'all be good. <laughs>